Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So today I got something interesting for you. You know, I uh, uh, just found out myself that I was on the furlough list. Uh, actually, I go on furlough on Friday like most of the nation has at this point. Um, and I wanted to, to try to do something that was technologically based, but kind of kept me busy and, you know, would help out. You know how it is, we all got to try to help each other out in this. Well, I got something pretty cool for you. What would you say if I told you that I could give you a way to help in the fight against COVID-19, aside from just sitting in your house? Check this out, guys. Alright guys, so I know we're all out there doing our part. We're staying away from everybody with social distancing. We're staying in our houses. We're staying away from, you know, uh, any kind of big major gatherings and that kind of thing. But I'm a tech. A lot of you guys out there are techs. We want to be able to do something that's not let's just sit there. What would you say if I told you you could help fight the COVID-19 using a Raspberry Pi? Wait a minute. A Raspberry Pi? How in the world is this thing going to help? Well, let me show you how it's done. And we're going to do this step by step together, guys. So the Raspberry Pi, as you guys all know, is a single board computer. Individually, these are not very powerful. Oh, I'd say there are plenty to do a little bit of gaming, uh, maybe even replace a super low-end desktop for basic home computing. Aside from that, there's not a lot you can do with them. But there were over 31 million of these sold, which means they're out there. And if everybody did what we're about to do, they'd be able to help in the fight against the coronavirus. Let's get started. First off, we're going to need a few items for this project. All right, We're going to obviously need a Raspberry Pi. Now, this will work on a 2, 3, 3B, 3B+, or even the 4s in all configurations. You're going to need, you don't necessarily need a case, but I'm going to put it in this little generic Raspberry case. And you need a power supply, and you need the SD card. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start by loading Raspbian, the base load of any of the Raspberry operating systems for this. It's one of my favorite out there. Uh, you know, there are a bunch of different OSs out there, like Ubuntu Linux, there's some Windows IoT, but Raspbian, for what it is, is a fantastic OS. So let's get started downloading that. Okay, guys, so as you can see here on Stumpy, I've actually got the Raspberry website, raspberrypi.org up here with the download page for Raspbian. And I am going to put links for this all in the description. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and download the Raspbian Buster with desktop and recommended software. And just go ahead and download the zip file. It's not a very big file, okay? When you get it, you want to save the file on your desktop anywhere you want to. Now, the actual download is about two and a half gigabytes. So, I mean, it's Kind of big, but it's not super, super big. Um, but you're going to need at least, I would say, an 8 gigabyte or even better, a 16 gigabyte uh, flash drive to go ahead and burn this image. We're going to do that next. Here we go. Once you've got that done, you're going to need a program called Belena Etcher. This is what you're going to use to burn your image to a card. All right, and from here, you will download Belena. Now, I've already actually got this installed, so uh, I'll leave a link for this, but then we'll move forward. Now, once you've got that downloaded, what you're going to do is you're going to launch Belena Etcher. At this point is when you're going to select your image. All right, so you can select your image, and I believe we put that on the desktop, and it should have uncompressed into its own folder. There it is. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select that. All right, now it's going to ask us for the target. We're going to go ahead and use... You don't have to use a gigantic uh, uh, USB drive for this, guys. It can be really small. So what we're going to do is, for the micro USB on this, I'm just going to use a little standard 16 gigger I got from Micro Center. All right, so we're not going to go too crazy with this. We're just going to go with a little teeny drive. And we're going to pop that into the old card slot reader. And as you can see, it says select target. And it came up with the card, little 16 gigger, and continue and flash. Now this will ask you for permission from Windows. There we go. And away it goes. Now the flash doesn't typically take that long on this small of an image. Usually oh, two to three minutes, not too bad. All right, so now we have our flashed image um, on our SD card, which is right here. 
Now, I made one little change here, guys, I wanted to let you know about. You'll notice that they've changed a little up here. Uh, instead of using a 4 in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and use a 3B+, plus because this is the most common raspberry that's out there right now. Like I said, 31 million of these so far, all right? So uh, we're going to go ahead and pop this card in, and we're going to get it up on screen here, and we're going to boot into our Raspbian build. We're going to go ahead and get that done quick. Now, you guys will also notice while this is booting over here, um, I did grab a little generic wireless keyboard and a mouse. This is what you'll be using also. Um, as you can see, the first thing it does is it uh, resizes the uh, file system to go ahead and use the entire uh, SD card. All right, once you're in Raspbian, you need to connect it to the network. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hardwire this LAN. Um, for doing this, uh, uh, what we're actually going to be doing, it's, it's better to hardwire. You can do this over Wi-Fi if you want to, but hardwired is always going to be faster. So let's go ahead for this particular case, and we're going to hardwire it. All right, we're going to go ahead and set up our location. There we go. And after you do this, there are going to be some updates that are going to download automatically on Raspbian. So you're going to want to let them go ahead and do all of the updates before we go any further. Uh, you can change your password right here if you want to. Uh, the default password, incidentally, on these things is Pi. So if you want to go that route, you can also do that too. So, All right. And that's fine. Looks good on the screen. We're going to skip that because we are on... The, uh, we're on the hardwired LAN. So now it's going to go ahead and it's going to update the operating system. All right, as you can see, we actually have our Raspbian up and running now. We're going to need to do a couple of things uh, right off the bat to go ahead and make sure that everything is upgraded and integrated correctly. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and launch a terminal. And in the terminal, we're going to type the following command. We're going to do a sudo and I will put this down in the description, guys, because I know that sometimes this can get a little bit long on these. All right. All right, and what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and do all of the updates um, on Raspbian. And after it gets to this point and it's done doing the updates, we're going to go ahead and do a reboot. Now, you can shut it down normally, uh, or you can actually do a reboot from the uh, terminal command. All right, so after all of your updates are done, everything is completed over here, the next thing you're going to do is go ahead and install what's called, the they call it the Boink, which is actually Berkeley. Um, they have an open project which actually allows you to share compute cycles um, on any device that's uh, uh, available out there um, in order to solve complex mathematical algorithms, uh, or in this particular case, to help to break down the molecular chains of the protein molecules of the COVID-19 virus. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and launch our terminal again. And there we go. And you're going to type in the following command. APT get install boink B O I N C. All right, that's going to go out there and it's going to grab the uh, the files we need to install. And we want to continue. And away it goes. All right, now that you've got it installed, what you want to do is you want to go up to your start button and you want to go down to system tools and boink manager. Now, once we're in here, we do have to make a few changes here. This is kind of important. All right, so you want to scroll down here, and what you're looking for is Rosetta at Home. All right? And you want to go to Next. Now, notice this is Biology, University of Washington. All right? And what it does, you can uh, here, this actually gives a good description of exactly what you're doing, guys. Determines the three-dimensional shapes of proteins and research that may ultimately finding the cures to some major human diseases. In this particular case, they are after COVID-19. That is what these guys are doing. All right, so that's what we're going to select. And it's going to say may not have that type work. You want to add it anyway, because we're dealing with a raspberry. 
And as you can see, it's communicating with the project right now. All right, now, you can set this up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it up as a new user, just like you guys would. All right, so we're going to set it up. All right. And for those of you who know, yeah, that is my email address. It's definitely not, uh, let's see here. My keyboard's acting a little squirrely here. All right, and let's see. We'll just put in something generic here. And then see if I can guess it the second time. <laughs> there we go. All right, so the project has successfully been added. All right, finish, here we go. All right, and as you can see, if they've got work currently available, um, it, it will start automatically uh, processing the work, um, and then it will send all of the results back from the Raspberry back up to them, and they can use your processing power. Um, I would suggest, however, if you're going to do this, to put your raspberries into a case with some decent cooling because this will absolutely peg your raspberry to 100% when they are processing. Of course, it's late in the day right now, uh, but by tomorrow it'll kick right off again and start processing, and you'll see all kinds of things flying by. So it's pretty cool. Um, now, of course, one raspberry, not going to make a difference. It's a tiny, 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 tiny drop in an ocean. But 30 million raspberries, that could kick them in the hiney. But, you know, hey, what the heck? We got raspberries sitting around. We got nothing to do with it. We're a bunch of geeks out here looking for a project, right? So there's your project. That's what you want to do uh, to help out in uh, kind of a techie, geeky kind of way. You know, if we're not doctors, we are definitely computer guys. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I, I, this is kind of one of those things I just wanted to do just to, number one, see if it could be done. But number two, to you know, help out a little bit if I can in my own tiny little way in my own corner of the world. So everybody out there, stay safe. Let's get through this. Let's get back to work. We've got to get things going again. I know all you out there are chomping at the bit just like I am. We will talk to you soon. Have a fantastic week and a great weekend. Have a good one.